First, James, let's talk about just tennis players giving back in general. You created a foundation. You've raised some valuable funds. What does it mean to you to give back? Well, I think it's really important what we do on the court, but it's so much more important what we do off the court. Uh, what we do on the court gives us the voice to do something positive in the world, and I think that is hopefully a good, uh, a good uh, message for the kids that are coming up to be role models. And um, you see too many negative, uh, too many negative articles and um, too much negative connotation with athletes. And you want to you want to have some positives uh, come out there. And Andy Roddick is for sure one of those. We'll talk about the Andy Rock Foundation in a second, but first let's talk about the James Blake Foundation as an example of tennis players giving back and doing exactly what you just said. What was your motivation, desire, and, and how, where's your foundation at now? Uh, my foundation raises money for early detection of cancer research. Uh, it was started, unfortunately, due to the, the illness of my father, passed away in 2004 from cancer, and uh, I wanted to do an event one time, and then I realized uh, how generous people were with their time. Uh, Andy Roddick was the first person to, to say yes when I asked him to be a part of my event the first year in 05. He's been back since then one more time, and uh, I've just had help from so many in the tennis community. I've had the help of John Mayer, Gavin DeGraw uh, to perform musical acts, Wyclef John, so I've been very fortunate, and um, it, it's still, still uh, in existence and John Mayer is going to come back again this year and and uh, I'm excited to have him uh, perform for, for a good cause. Tell us about your relationship with Andy Roddick. You guys have been friends for a long time. You've been rivals. You've been friends on the tennis court, on the golf course today, but also been raising money for, for uh, valuable causes. What does it mean to be here to support him? You know, we started at the challenger level, and, and to think how far we've come since then is pretty amazing. Uh, we were, you know, scrapping it out for who would pay for the Outback dinners uh, back then, and now uh, we're both raising hundreds of thousands of dollars for, uh, for good causes. So it, it's really um, an honor to be a part of it and to be mentioned really in the same sentence as him. And we've been rivals, we've been, uh, we've been friends, and we've been Davis Cup teammates, which has been so special, I think, for both of us. I don't want to speak for him, but it's been some of the best times of my life being a part of the Davis Cup team. So, um, you know, he's, he's been a big part of my tennis career, and I'm, I'm proud of that. Who paid for the Outback dinner? Uh, I think he beat me in the Challenger, so he probably did. <laughs> Jimmy, where are you at with your tennis right now? You had you worked your butt off. You had a good summer. You won a bunch of matches. Heading into the fall, where are you at with your tennis? How are you feeling about it? I actually feel great. I feel healthier than I have in the last two years, so I'm excited about that. And I put myself in positions to, to go deep in tournaments. I haven't done it yet, but I feel like I've put myself in enough positions that eventually it's going to go my way. And, and then once it does, getting a little more confidence, I think that's all that's missing right now, and I'll be, uh, I'll be back to hopefully playing some of my better tennis. Any song in particular you're looking forward to from Elton tonight? Um, I think, you know, everyone from Almost Famous loves hearing Tiny Dancer. Um, uh, what else? Daniel's a good one. Uh, it's a little slower, though. Some of my favorites are his real slow ones, so I don't know if I should, uh, if I should be looking forward to those, but, uh, but I, I will be, even if I, even if I have to not be as manly but to be cheering for those.